Ladies and gentlemen, this is White Lightning 777. And, um, yeah, the light went off. Okay, good. It's the idiocracy of it all. Sheer stupidity. It never ceases to amaze me. Just when I think it can't get any dumber, it does. I mean, we've seen that show, Idiocracy, where that Camacho guy is the president and, you know, Rondo uh, makes plants grow stronger, whatever. I mean, this is what we're dealing with. The mask holes <laughs> decided to pay $450,000 to families separated at the border of illegals who committed the federal crime of illegally immigrating the country. Federal offense separated from their families. Now, I suppose, now let's say you uh, trespass into the Capitol and, you know, were invited in by the cops, gave you an unlawful order, you knew it was an unlawful order, did it anyway because you figured, well, the cops said when you're sitting in prison, I think, aren't they separated from their family? They're going to get $450,000 too? Well, they might in 2024. I, I'm tell you what, I tell you what, I'd laugh my ass off when Trump gets elected again in 2024, unless the Chinese hack the machines again, and he pays $450,001 to the people at the Capitol and pardons everybody just as a, a big, uh, you know, let's go Brandon <laughs> moment. <laughs> you know, he says, I have an announcement. One, let's go Brandon. <laughs> So should all anybody so should all federal criminals who are separated from their family get four hundred fifty thousand dollars? So if you're a moonshiner or you made an unregistered machine gun or an unregistered silencer or you were counterfeiting money, okay, even if you didn't hurt anybody, it's a victimless crime. But you're gonna are, are you gonna get four hundred fifty thousand dollars too? Really? <laughs> this is stupid. And the latest uh, rumor, at least according to Gab, apparently, uh, uh, <laughs> well, it wasn't Major Biden that was uh, having those accidents in the White House. Uh, apparently, uh, the uh, usurper, the vi Chinese viceroy, masquerading as our president, uh, Biden, apparently had a little... Uh, uh, potty really <laughs> imagine he's sitting with the Pope and then just befouls himself it's just like I don't know what, what did the Pope tell him to what, what did the Pope tell him to kind of cut down those abortions a little bit <laughs> oh this is great apparently Biden does give a crap after <laughs> Ugh, courtesy of the virus. Yeah, never had asthma a day before in my life, and I got this stupid thing and caught it. Oh, well. <laughs> but you wonder, people ask, oh, your health is going to be destroyed by the vaccine, blah, blah. Actually, I haven't had a cold. I haven't had the flu. Aside from the scarring in the lungs and having to use that stupid inhaler, I've been fine. Germ-wise. Wouldn't it be ironic? The coronavirus cures the common cold. See, it's called viral interference. I just went to the doctor again, and I couldn't escape without a flu shot. He's like, look, your lungs, your, your lungs are messed up. We don't, he said, look, you really don't want to get bronchitis. We, we, we want to try to keep everything the hell out of you that we can get. And I asked, well, how many people are testing for the flu? He says, oh, yeah, when someone comes in with a cold or sniffles, we test them for the common cold. We test them for the flu. I test them. I send in two tests each. I'll just send in one. I'll take two like, like what I did. He said that getting the PCR test and then the rapid test at the same time was a good decision. And 
the rapid tests came up positive. They said it quote lit up like uh, I think lit up like a Christmas, like the Fourth of July. I have some words to that effect. And the other one came back a few days later as abnormal. See the PCR test, it's not positive or negative. It's normal or abnormal. If you cycle it so many times and they don't find anything, that's considered normal. If you find a higher level indicating a sufficient viral load to be sick, that's abnormal. Because if you literally inhale like one or two dead virus fragments and take that test, it'll show up. So that was abnormal. So two different tests did confirm that I had the CCP virus. He said, we haven't seen a positive flu test or cold test in months. Every time someone comes in with the sniffles, even if it's the kid, we test them. Bam, COVID-19. Bam, COVID-19. Bam, COVID-19. He said they even had a few samples, uh, you know, that they, they do extensive testing to see what variant is in the area. He said they all come in back Delta, one, one or two Delta plus. I mean... I asked him, I said, is that, is, is that like what I heard about called viral interference? And the doctor's like, oh my God, you did your research. He says, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And I'm like, so, so you know how, so he said, yeah, it's like an invasive species. He says, you, you go fishing? I said, yeah. He said, well, you know how when those snakeheads get thrown in the river and kill all the native fish off and take over? I'm like, yeah, he said, that's all viral interference is. So it kind of confirms what I looked at. And for the record, by YouTube, vaccination, get tested. Do I have it? Get an antibody test. Did I used to have it? Am I cleared to get the vaccine? And if you're cleared, go get it. So we're going to clear up that policy. And all the other, and by the way, all the other measures people talk about, you know, permectin, the monoclonal antibodies. I mean, if you're vaccinated, those things work just as well, if not better. They all work. There's no either or I got to choose one or the other you could do all the above you could throw the kitchen sink of this virus there's no well now you can't get vaccinated after you've had the monoclonal antibody so those have to kind of clean out that's a contraindication by the way fear of needles is another one but stupid and now <laughs> the dummies are saying well we're going to mandate vaccinating kids Okay. <laughs> here's the thing kids are not just little adults they're not stupid you should still treat them like human beings they're not little adults if you're under 25 the flu is more likely to kill you if you're at 25 years of age the hazard from the ccp bioweapon and the flu is statistically the same and then it flips as you get older basically let's say this is young to old. This is zero years of age. This is 100. Well, if you're looking at the flu, the fatality curve is sort of like this. It starts out young and then goes down and then, you know, a very high peak at the end when you're old. It kills the young. If you were plotting the curve by age where this is the death rate and this is the age, the coronavirus, the profile, the curve does the opposite. It goes like this. The young are safe. And then as you get up, like once you get to 50, it goes up. So the profile is the exact opposite of the flu. There's no way the flu could just flip its mortality rate like that. It just, no disease can do that. It's not the flu. Okay? And not and 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 think about it. When a virus, it's not just enough that it can infect you. What it has to do is it has to take the good germs and bacteria, kick them out of the way. It has to take the bad germs, and you know, kind of smack them to the side, kick that you know, kick the door in, and then attack. So before it even goes after your immune system, it has to dominate other organisms in its environment, the same way that a snakehead will kick out your native fish, or if you're in the Mississippi River, those Asian carp are just killing off everything else. Or the Burmese pythons of Florida. It's the same concept, just scaled down. 
That's what it does. <laughs> and then these idiots are like, well, the uh, natural immunity is better. Well, really? I already did a video on, on that. The using natural immunity as a means of vaccination, I mean, it, 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 there's no proof that it can be made safer. And just prepping people to make it reason to give them to make it reasonably safer than otherwise to get that. I mean, it, you, just the preparation, it, it, it's, un, it's not tenable. And yeah, the vaccines are stupid. You're going to mandate them on kids. It's a vaccine that's out of date. It's Wuhan. It's not polyvariant. And the kids don't get it anyway. If from a kid, if you're, say, a 10-year-old kid, okay, the flu is more likely to kill you. Well, due to viral interference, the coronavirus has displaced the flu and the cold. The coronavirus to children is not as dangerous as the flu. If you're under 25... In this pandemic, your chances of dying from a respiratory illness are lower. The virus has actually made things safer for children. And yet they want to vaccinate against this with a vaccine that's out of date. And they're still not even mandating the kids get a flu shot. Now, the flu is pretty much gone, but it's still more dangerous to kids. It still makes more sense to get a flu shot because your your chances of dying from the flu if you're a kid are a lot greater than dying of this. The thing, it's actually safer to be a kid in the school with a pandemic, with the coronavirus, than it was beforehand with the flu. That's the way the mortality co code works, curve works, and they're still not mandating the kids get a flu shot. How stupid can you get? This is idiocracy. The, the thing's not updated. Now, you know, look, yes, it should be available. There are kids that have AIDS and that have other issues, or maybe the kid lives with their grandma or grandpa. Now, there's no case, according to the World Health Organization, not Malone, not these other Tim Penny or others, of a kid 10 years age of younger, transmitting the virus to an adult. Not one case. Zero. Zero. A vaccinated or unvaccinated. Not one. And the teachers, I mean, they can get vaccinated. Now, probably. You know, if the vaccine is conservatively dosed, a very low, gentle dose, you can avoid the myocarditis, which is obviously the result of too high of a dosage. I mean, the side effects side effects like that indicate too high of a dosage. By the way, myocarditis is rare. I mean, go look up with kids. Go look up the number of kids that drown, in swimming, that drown each year. Go look up the number of kids that die in car accidents each year. Go look up the number of kids that are bitten by dogs fatally and non-fatally each year. And then compare it to the vaccines, or even the virus itself. I mean, in terms of your risk factors, the, the problems and complications are extraordinarily rare. And myocarditis and stuff like that, yeah, you know what you can do? There's a class of drugs called non-steroid anti-inflammatories. In other words, aspirin. You take an aspirin, or some other drug under the care of the doctor, make sure the kid can take the aspirin because in some cases the age, you know, they can't really do that. Or some anti-inflammatory or Benadryl before you get them the vaccine and then later that afternoon and then, you know, you keep that up for a few days and, you know, you're going to, a rare complication is gone. It's not an issue. But the stupidity goes on. You're, it's, it's safer to be a kid in the age of the CCP bioweapon than it is in the previous age of the flu. And these these woke tards are just going ape shit over that. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, 
I mean, the lunatics have taken over the asylum. And, you know, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. You know, you always want to have tools and options and choices. And, you know, there's people, circumstances that, you know, are different. I mean, it should, it, it, you know, the vaccine should be voluntary. It should be up to the family. Or if the kid is old enough, you know, some kids are nerds. I mean, you get a kid that's a genius IQ that's 10 years old, but they're taking calculus and they're kind of intelligent. I mean, you know, you can have, you know, dialogue with a child. You know, by the way, they're, they're people too. They can think, you know, parent, child, doctor, or, you know, mainly the parents and the doctor make the decision and it should just be, you know, that way. You shouldn't have to go telling people that this stuff. Of course, now at the job, you know, the vaccine mandates have hit and it's by December 8th, everybody, uh, you know, we're on federal property they have to be vaccinated have an exemption and if they get tested they got to get tested once every three days that's gonna get expensive quick and and i have yet to clarify well what if you had natural what if you had it and this and here's the other stupid creepy ass thing here's here's the other stupidity the other day like yesterday i get this robo call from the state of maryland saying by the way you should have, you know, you're eligible for a booster. Do you want to make an appointment to get a booster shot? They didn't even say what kind. I'm like, this robocall, I'm like, you couldn't even have a human being call me and discuss this? The state of Maryland, when I had the virus, got out of quarantine. CDC called me. The health department called me. Baltimore called me. I got ping-ponged back and forth. They know, they know that I had the virus. They also know that mainly as an experiment to do head-to-head -head vaccine versus virus like which has the worst symptoms you know head-to-head -head, i was sort of an, i just did the experiment well i'll get the j and j shot because after one of my co-workers died everybody you know people were before them, i screw it i've had it i'm not going to get it agile but after somebody died everybody was like oh crap <laughs> and they all ran out they all pretty much got vaccinated within a day or two hearing about it you know you one of your one of your people gets killed and you see that immemorium yeah it changes it when somebody you know kind of changes your mind a little bit you know it does so hopefully we don't lose anybody over over this uh, over this vax thing and i've told people they're like well because i'm sort of the union rep for my shift people are talking to me i'm like look doesn't matter if you had it doesn't matter if you think you had it i did I did, if, you, if you're concerned, just just get the one. Just get the one shot. Don't worry about it. it you know, if you're healthy, just just do the one shot. You're fine. And if you get it, yeah, you know, you'll have a cold. You'll have hay fever. What's going to happen if you're vaccinated and you get it is you're going to be sneezing. You're going to be coughing. You're going to have, you know, like hay fever. Like you're going to be splattering everything. There was a video on BitChute of a fellow who was vaccinated, had the virus anyway, and he's pissed because the test came back negative and he has every right to be but you know what he's yelling and screaming and he's just you know i mean he's ready basically to like punch a hole in the wall and, and i don't blame him you know when something doesn't work you know you get angry and then he coughs and you know what he does you now when i had it and i'm coughing i'm like dry cough like nothing comes out your <laughs> and you you feel this crap in your lungs and burning and nothing comes out not you, your nose runs you have a lot of discharge but nothing comes out of your lungs well this guy sneezes he's you he takes his his hand puts it in his arm and sneezes into his elbow and you know why because if he had sprayed it into the camera that camera would have been just splattered so it's interesting to see footage of somebody with a vaccine who has it versus myself it's kind of in a morbid way i wasn't in any condition to be yelling and screaming and cursing at anybody when i had it. i was like flat on my back and it turns out i was actually a lot closer to dying than i thought i mean you know your blood oxygen drops into the 80s i mean that's that's it that's it like you know you're you're like right on the knife's edge because it can, what can happen is it can crash really really quick 
and you start running out of air. I mean, he Doc said, look, if you stayed sick for another 12 hours, you'd have been on a ventilator or worse. You'd have been gone. So if you ever do something stupid like that again, he says, if you ever get into that that range, you don't go to the hospital. I'll discharge from the practice. As he said, look, I, 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 can, I can't fix stupid. But, you know, he says, well, you went out and got vaccinated. Even there, he curious. says, well, you know, I'll give you another chance. You sort of redeemed yourself and, you know, you're fine. But these these idiots know that I had the virus, and they know that I took one vaccine already. I mean, you know, you, you give the devil his due. You know, I'll let. I have a low tolerance for stupid, but it's not zero. I'll, I'll be okay. We'll do this once. If you keep and if you keep screwing with me and you keep acting like a like a jerk, you know. You're gonna get, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna get smacked, you're gonna get smacked down. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna respond to that. I'll, I'll, I'll let you get away with anything once. That's it. And boosters, why? Update the stupid vaccines. It's not even the right variant. I mean, I probably had the Brazil variant, and, and the only reason I got the booster to the Wuhan, I figured, well, you know, polyvariant hybrid immunity. Yeah, the nat the natural immunity is the gold standard. Well, guess what? There's a platinum standard, and that's hybrid polyvariant immunity. That's as good as it gets. You know, and I just figured I don't want to get this screw with this crap again. Doc's like, look, we gotta keep crap out of your lungs. We really, because you know, you you get bronchitis in your lungs or pneumonia again or whatever. You might be looking at a transplant. You know, he says you can't. You know, you we gotta make sure that that all the Shots are done, and he said, you know, he was even saying, like, there's pneumonia things for older people or whatever. He's even going to, you know, he's going to research it some more. We're even kicking around the idea of getting some extra protection from extra respiratory things. So, you know, not that the medical stuff. I mean, the reason I'm talking about that is because it may save lives. It may benefit people. It may help people doing this. I'm doing this because... Knowledge is power, and whether you agree with me or not, at least you'll get a different perspective and see what this is. And then they go around, well, 99.8% of people survive this. Okay, yeah, you survive. But there's a difference between not getting killed and not getting maimed. If, if you, say, get in a motorcycle accident and you're paralyzed from the neck down, yeah, you survived. <laughs> But you're not the same. You're a changed person. I'm lucky I could still work. <laughs> you know, and, and I wasn't anti-vax. I mean, I caught it in January. I was... The, the system to get the vaccine then was convoluted. And I was trying to go through the, the web and trying to see whether I'm essential. Because if you're a security federal guard, is that an essential employer or not? They couldn't even define that. And people are like, well, you could get monoclonals. It was it was approved. Yeah, it was approved, but it wasn't available. You couldn't even get N95 masks back then. When I went to the Stop the Steel rallies, there were uh, there was a vendor selling N95s for 80 bucks each. And he was sold out. You couldn't get those. Those things were like unobtainium. You had to get the cloth ones, you had to get them online. They took weeks to get to me. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and the thing is, people are like, well, I'll, like Prager is like, well, I'll get it now. I'm not, I'm not getting any younger. I'll catch it now. Well, yeah, but there's new drugs coming out every day. There's one like Merck. It's called Mul, Mulvenipi. Oh crap! I can't pronounce it. it. Begins with an M. They're the same people that make ivermectin. It's an antiviral that works on several different ones. That's just a new one. There's new drugs coming out all the time. There's updated vaccines that are probably going to come. There's, you know, the treatments are getting better. And even in terms of hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin, the clinical trials are going on. And more and more evidence is coming out supporting those to see what the limitations really are. We're getting more information because at last there's beginning to get some large double-blind studies that are really gonna get some good numbers and they're encouraging but we're finding out more all the time this is not the best time to get infected if you're gonna bug chase you know what wait six months wait a year 
wait two years because the treatments are getting better all the time. And maybe with the treatments, it may be end up at some point getting being safer to get infected than vaccinated. We might have the cure. You go in, go in up. Oh, I tested positive. Go to CVS's. Here's a shot. Take a pill. Here's a nasal spray. Go home. You're done. The cure is coming because, you know, the, the governments around the world are throwing a crap ton of money at this. And then you look at these other other policies. I mean, they're it's ridiculous what's going on. Closing down pipelines and then buying things from other countries. I mean, give me a break. And leaving Afghanistan, I mean, woke Tartistan. And it's not America. These blue states are not America. They don't they, these idiots, they um, they they don't deserve to call themselves Americans. They're they're scum. Americans are patriots. Americans are red state people. What I call them is woke Tartistan. Okay? Or, you know, China second class, whatever. They don't deserve to be called Americans, and their policies are running what used to be what are are destroying what remains of Western civilization. This is a program of, of suicide. We are destroying ourselves. Trump won. And there's no clear solution. I mean, the best thing we could do is try to arrange a deal as a country where we, using the Czechoslovakia model, break up. Well, Tartistan can have some things, territory in the blue states, the red states could take theirs. We shake hands, divvy up the nukes 50-50, the military 50-50, go our separate ways. That's probably the most peaceful, non-violent, non-destructive way to deal with these problems. Everything's just going to hell. It's all, I mean, the center doesn't hold. We're kind of in the same position that Rome was in when the empire was deteriorating. I I mean, Trump can get back in 2024. I'm sure he can. But this is so broke. I, I don't think anybody can fix it. No matter how much of a genius he may be, um, by the time he gets there, it, it, you know, it may be, it may be too far gone. I mean, I'm even beginning to look at like other countries, like what, how would you become a citizen somewhere else? What societies are more stable than uh, what will be the United States? Like, how realistic is it in my late 40s to learn a foreign language? Or should I restrict what I'm doing to English-speaking areas? I mean, this is just falling apart. Long live the Republic, but... I mean, I've studied sociology for a while and history for a while, and uh, it doesn't look good. And no magic, God, can't fix this. We've, in a sense, done this to ourselves by leaving ourselves vulnerable to a bioweapon attack and a hack of our voting machines. What happened is an attack that was very sophisticated, in a way, beautifully executed in sort of a sick, twisted way that could not have been anticipated. You know, the future of the world of the 21st century, I mean, probably belongs to China. Probably belongs to the Chinese Communist Party, which, by the way, is fascist more than communist. It doesn't look good, people. Got to make plans for the future. You got to, you know, you got to have a boogie bag. You know, like the old advice women would give their daughters. When you get married to a guy, have a survival bag with a gun and some money. That way, if the dude turns out to be a psycho, you can get the hell out of Dodge. I think we kind of, our marriage to our societies kind of going on the rocks and uh, as patriots as Americans um, 
<laughs> I mean, if if like if you were invaded by an army, if the Chinese or Russians started goose stepping up up the Mississippi River, yeah, the militia could kick in and fight them, and you could recover territory. I mean, look at the Taliban with just like seventy five thousand people and being lightly armed. Like how much hell they gave a mechanized army? There's eighty five million armed Americans, about three hundred three hundred fifty million guns, and probably trillions of rounds of ammo. But when it comes to social decay, I mean, how do you, you know, attack a system that's destroying itself? I mean, you can't shoot a policy. You, you can't, how do you shoot a policy? I mean, a, a, a society that is programmed, I mean, who? When it all goes, I mean, how? it's kind of like if... A tornado is going to hit your house and you whip out your AK-47 and uh, no. Sorry for being downbeat and pessimistic people, but <laughs> it's it. I mean, it's getting dumber and dumber and dumber. And these critical race theory people think they can discriminate their way out of racism. Give me a break. It, it's just, it's falling apart. I don't know what to tell you, but ladies and gentlemen, we're screwed. This is White Lightning 777 signing out.